Hello everybody, this is Alex Foss, your professor at TVE Course, and today we're going to talk a little bit about television and specifically color TV and color TV history. Now, television has been around for a large number of years. At first we had uh, a system developed by John Longine Baird in 1928, and uh, it, he also produced the first color system back in then. It was mechanical. And, uh, and, and at the same time, Sarnoff at RCA was trying to perfect or come up with television. And of course, his engineers were telling him that all electronic uh, television was impossible. And so, uh, you know, he didn't go ahead and proceed with all electronic television for quite some time. Uh, but there was somebody uh, named uh, Philo T. Farnsworth, who was sort of independent, but he actually very intelligent. And uh, surprisingly so, you know, while all these uh, uh, engineers from Stanford and from Ivy League colleges were telling Sarnoff that you couldn't have electronic television, Philo T. Farnsworth, which, who I think was just a high school graduate, actually made the first work in uh, all electronic television system uh, in California, in San Francisco. And uh, he did that in 1928, or actually 1927. And uh, it was a very interesting story because at that time, Sarnoff was interested in all electronic television. And he actually uh, sent Vladimir Zorkin to spy on Philo T. Farnsworth and try to figure out how that system worked. And, and one of his secretaries, he sent, sent her to look at the system. And basically television is, uh, his form of television was where you had a scanning beam that would go across some sort of photo pickup tube uh, using the pro properties of certain chemicals like cesium oxide that would interact with light to produce an electrical charge. And if you scanned across the image plate, as you would if you were reading a page, and then turn that into an electrical signal that would vary depending on how the light was falling on the plate. And then that signal could been, then go down a wire and then go to a device which had a scanning beam that hit an, uh, a uh, phosphorus coating on a tube and that would also be more or less in, uh, intensity of the electron beam depending on the light that was received at the pickup tube and it would make light and dark spots on this uh, phosphorus coating on a, on a, a CRT cathode ray tube <coughs> to produce a, a reproduction of the image and so uh, that was the very first television in electronic form by Philo T. Farnsworth and basically television is always talked about in the form of of scan rates, scan lines, uh, color fields, and things like that. Like the, the first primary television system in the United States uh, what was before NTSC, but uh, they had an NTSC system, which basically is now known as 480p, or 480i, excuse me, which means 480 lines interlaced. And basically, you used interlaced scanning back in those days because the electronic circuitry could not keep up with doing 480 lines of progressive. As a matter of fact, the original NTSC uh, color uh, black and white system uh, had 525 lines and 45 of those lines were in the vertical blanking interval. And so it took that many lines, 45 lines for the scanning circuitry and the old two type televisions to catch up to the point where you could make your first visible line. It would then do 420, uh, 480 lines uh, in of, uh, video, of course, half were in one field, half were in another field, go to the bottom and start up and do the, the 45 lines in the blanking interval. You also had some uh, space in between the, each horizontal line for the sync circuitry to catch up again. Now, you know, we have like 1080i, uh, which is 10, 1080 interlaced, and that just means a number of vertical scanning lines, or 720p, which is uh, 720 lines vertical progressive. And, uh, and so it's basically when you say, 1080i, 720 720p, 480i, you're talking about the number of scan lines vertical. Uh, the original standard def, you know, again is 480, high def is 720 or 1080, and uh, of course there's uh, higher levels than that, <clears throat> but broadcast television, 1080i still. And so um, one of the most fascinating things about it was in the early days of television, CBS came out with a system of color TV which was sequential and they actually used mechanical filters that would spin in front of the camera and spin in front of the uh, picture tube to make the color. 
uh, they had some dramatic defects with that where this big, they some had big drums of color filters that would spin in front of the picture tube. And several of those would fly apart, tearing up apartments, blowing, blowing apart sets and so forth. Uh, so the CBS system also had a big problem in that it was not compatible with existing black and white systems. And so um, Sarnoff had his engineers come up with a way of making a compatible color system, which was an NTSC color system made by RCA. And so we're, we're going to show, show you a historical film that uh, was the first actual videotape of uh, color broadcast that we know of, and it shows Sarnoff and President Eisenhower and uh, the celebration of the very first time color television was switched on. And so uh, it's a great public domain film. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you. The president's car has just turned in our Spruce Line Lane, coming in from Nebraska Avenue. Car with the flags, first car in the procession. Rounding the turn. Secret Service cars, newsmen behind him. Perfect day for this. Temperature about 80, bright sun. You see the presidential flag on one fender. President riding in the back with two men. Robert Montgomery and Jim Haggerty. The president is being greeted by Carlton Smith, general manager of WRC, and by Robert Sarnoff, president of the National Broadcasting Company. Robert Montgomery, the president's TV advisor. Jim Haggerty being greeted by Mr. Sarnoff. They come inside. The president looks up. The president has expressed a desire to see the technical facilities inside. He will be taken below by Mr. Smith and Mr. Sarnoff, and then come up to Studio A for the dedicatory ceremonies. Meanwhile, a great number of dignitaries have arrived there for that story to David Brinkley. The cameras you see before you are color cameras. They are now transmitting a black and white picture. By pressing this button, which I now do, the cameras are transmitting a live color picture. When you step before them, you will be making your first appearance on color television from Washington. 3,000 miles away in our studios in Burbank, California, this entire program is being recorded on electronic tape. The picture, the color, the sound are being captured for posterity through this recording system which NBC began using on a full-scale basis only last month the change to daylight time. It will permit us, sir, to retelecast this program to many sections of the United States several hours later today and with such true fidelity that millions of Americans will see this ceremony as though it were being enacted at that time. I have a strip of this new tape. I have asked our engineers to make two tape copies of this program. One will be sent, Mr. President, to the White House for your personal retention. The other will be presented to the Library of Congress so that its archives may permanently possess a visual record in color of this significant occasion. Now we have created one further remembrance. At my far left, you see a replica of a plaque which has been placed in the wall of the main lobby of this station. This plaque commemorates your participation in the dedication. It is intended as an enduring reminder to all who enter this building of the honor paid us on this day and beyond that, of our obligation to continue strengthening the broadcasting bonds between Washington and the nation. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. President Sarnoff, distinguished guests, fellow Americans. I think all of us realize that in these fast-moving times, it is highly important that our nation's capital should be attached to every single citizen in this country by the very fastest, best kind of communications. Decisions of a nation and of a government that at one time uh, could uh, tolerate 
three or four weeks of study now demand almost instantaneous a reaction. So it is, again, apparent that unless our citizenry can be informed of the things that happen in the world and are reflected uh, through the eyes of uh, legislative and executive leaders in such a way that they may understand exactly what these things mean, then the United States cannot react as it should. Now, uh, today, as I came through this building, which will itself make these communications better, more rapid, more comprehensive, I was completely overwhelmed by the technical complexities and problems that the broadcasting industry has been solving. I do not know whether the rest of you in this audience have been able to make that same tour, but uh, it is like nothing else so much in my mind as the uh, radar room in a, a big battleship or some other complex thing that really is entirely beyond my comprehension, but is still uh, capable of exciting my wonderment. So I cannot fail to uh, congratulate, to felicitate the National Broadcasting Company for this particular step in the communication, in developing the communication uh, industry of our uh, country. I felicitate the officials of the company, and I must say I congratulate every citizen whose um, understanding of this nation, of the world, will be made better and fuller uh, by this development. Thank you very much. Thank you all.